you're, uh, I mean, creatively, you, you do a little bit of everything. I mean, I read that you were originally an art history major. Yeah, but you know what? That's that's because I was an elementary education major also. And here's how sexist it was uh, at the time. Um, not sexist towards men, but I think that towards women because art hit, I mean, because elementary education is largely uh, female. You know, I was real when I went through the program at UNC Chapel Hill, I was the only man in the elementary education program. And and at the time, the university said, well, elementary education, you can't just have that as your major. It's not a real enough degree. And so we were required to have a second What year major. was this? This is 90. I graduated 95. It's not, changed. It has 1907? changed. 1907? What is this? But can you believe that? <laughs> like even that kind of sexism back in the 90s around something that is, you know, predominantly a, 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 you know, women in, the, in that field. Um so I had to pick another major, and if I was going to pick another major, I knew, you know, I knew I was going to go into teaching. It was just something that I felt really called to do. Um, so I thought, well, I'm, you know, when you're at a university and you want a good liberal arts education, it's good just to try a lot of different things out. That was one of the things that I enjoyed about being at the university was getting to take philosophy classes and religion classes and things that you would never, you might not normally take a deep dive into otherwise. And art history did a great job of kind of pulling all that together. Art history is this cool major that you're not just talking about Rembrandt and Picasso, but there, there's a lot of classes that were to classes on things like Japanese tea ceremonies or uh, masks in non-Western cultural traditions. You know, you got to, you got to just kind of take this. These were being the same university that said uh, elementary education is for the ladies only in, in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, it sounds like there must have been a lot of uh, diverging viewpoints on on what uh, constituted education at that time. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? That was, I mean, the university was a really progressive place, and so that that decision that came down from administration at the time about the elementary ed program not being a real major was uh, who knows where that came from. But that was not the dominant view at the university. <laughs> so it was a really progressive place. Of it. Well, I, of course, can, can can laugh because I'm in the liberal bastion that is Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's definitely not true that we were the absolute head of the Ku Klux Klan, I think, 25 years ago. <laughs> yeah, right. And, you, and Indiana and North Carolina, where I am, we, we both have had uh, Klan appearances in the past month. So. Oh, my. Yeah, I don't know if you heard that, but Indiana, yeah. And, and for I both of them. I didn't know. Well, yeah, North North Carolina. No, that's that's where Charlottesville is, of course. No, no, no. The, Charlottesville is Virginia, and they oh. didn't. Um, and um, we just had one actually in our town in Hillsboro, uh, Klansmen in in full robes, and we did the same thing that you you all did in Indiana, which was you had just the community come out in force um, with lots of signs about love and inclusion, and you know that we don't. We will not tolerate hate in our town and um, drove, them, drove them out of town with their tails between their legs. And, so, and that was the same thing that happened in Indiana, is my understanding. So it's great. Great to see. It is. I, um, when I see things like that, I'm, I'm, at this point, I've, I've lived here my whole life. I'm just kind of used to it. It's like, okay, well, we all know what, what fellows are and we don't talk to them most of the time anyway. <laughs> right, just yeah avoid <laughs> so i don't like make a note on my calendar of, this is going on this day. it's indiana it's probably going on somewhere on any given day yeah. but also so is the indiana writer center so is uh, <laughs> all right, kinds right. of great yeah. stuff uh, focus on well. the good things so, yeah <laughs> which i suppose is uh, just america in general at this point to <laughs> focus on the good things wherever you are yeah that's right <laughs> at what point uh, did you turn so with all these things you, you can do uh, a musician um you could obviously be an artist um it wouldn't surprise me to learn that you'd had a small role in a tv series <laughs> no, i'm no actor i've never acted in anything so i'm terrible at it what uh, what point did you say writing that's that that's where it's at for me um it was after college and so and it was teaching elementary school so it was really just that Going to going into the because I, I think that one of the reasons that I was drawn to elementary education in the first place, um, you know, because at the time I'm 20 years old at a university. And so, that, I mean, there's a reason why there's not as many people going into elementary education at that age, because, uh, you know, it's, it's you're so young yourself in a lot of ways. But 
I think one of the things that drew me to elementary education was that the books that I read during that time in my life were my very favorite books. And I and just often found even in college, I was continuing to read the Narnia books. I was continuing to go back to a lot of those stories from my childhood that I loved so much. And getting into the classroom with with kids and you know, the 95, that would have been, gosh, you know, I mean, think about some of the books that were, I mean, Harry Potter was was coming out around then, The Giver by Lois Lowry, Holes by Lewis Sacker. I can't remember when His Dark Material started, The Golden Compass, but I feel like it was right around that same time period. And so to me, it was a really exciting time uh, for cho- for the children's books that were coming out. And to go every day to a job where, I was getting to teach these kind of books to kids, to talk deeply about it. The kids at that age, they're super excited about the books. You know, like they want, they want to, you know, at fourth and fifth grade, they're excited to be at school, excited to talk about nerd out on all this kind of stuff. And, and so was I. So it, it just filled me with a lot of excitement and energy that I brought home after school. And my original practice was that I would come home every day um, which was elementary school. So the kids are often on the bus and heading home by three o'clock. So I didn't have any clubs that I had to, it wasn't, you know, a coach or any, cause it's elementary school. So I could just, I could be home by three 30. Wouldn't even change clothes. I'd just get a cup of tea or something, head straight to my computer and I didn't have kids at the time either, you know, cause I was just in my twenties. And that was my time every single day that I looked forward to, you know, during the school day, as much as I enjoyed teaching, I would often look forward to that as a reward at the end of the day was coming home and getting to just write. And, you know, did that for so many years, 10, 15 years of, well, maybe not 15, because I taught for 13 before the nine pound hammer came out and I left the classroom. But it was, it was, you know, committing to that practice and trying to do it every single day that helped enormously. 